think we're live, Lisa Williams. Oh, yay! We're live! We're live! Well, I'm living. I'm still living. Yes, I'm you are. Living. Yes, you are. <laughs> How are you, Liz? How are you I'm doing? Fabulous. <laughs> so, I have to do this. I have to do my thing, okay? So whenever I talk to Lisa, I want to talk like this and always say it's just massive. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, you do it all the time. You do. I know it's kind of ridiculous. It's totally ridiculous. Okay, That's I'm gonna okay. Find, I'm gonna find the feed right here. Okay, and see if I can find. Oh. I'm trying to do two things at once here, people. Oh, I see people. They're saying hi, hi, hi. hi. I put them up here as well. Yes. 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 <laughs> I've known oh. for a long time, and we're a little goofy together. Okay, so just I'm gonna. Yeah, I've seen it. We're seeing all the people. I can't share it though, Liz. I can't I share it. You can't share it right now that, because that's okay. Maybe I'm a private group. That's why. That's why. That's fine. Silly private it's group. Private. It's a private. Don't tell anyone. I just told a thousand people on Facebook Live a minute about an hour ago. I went, I'm going live with Liz Dawn, so you might get a load of people. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Who cares? You can direct them to this page if you want. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> okay, wait a second. Why can't I find? I'm trying to find the live feed on my phone. Come oh, on, so I can see. How'd you do that? Because I'm clever. You have to click onto the see way out online. She's, Lisa's oh. clever. <laughs> no, I'm just English. Um, no, you have to click on it. You have to click I on, it, on it. I clicked up. on the page. Okay, so there I am on the page. Yeah, and then scroll down. Scroll down. And okay, then you'll see us. No, I see myself making an, an announcement that, okay, keep going, keep going, it keep going. New activity. Keep going. Oh, my God, I'm going to get nauseous. Refresh your page. Okay, let me, let me just say Liz is normally very technical. In fact, Liz actually just contacted me and said, do you need any technical support? Please <laughs> 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 wrap me up. Do I need to yeah. say anything? Lisa's really, she's really kind of a tech genius. I am. I'm a little techie. I am a little you techie. techie. But you know yeah. what? I have a secret passion for um, to doing like video video editing. So I've been learning all these new softwares. Oh, really? What are you using? I don't know. It's just a secret thing of mine. Like I want to do, I just like it. Well, there's nothing wrong with just liking it. It's I like, fun. I like it's creating fun. that kind of fun stuff. And I like playing with images. I'm frozen. Oh, you're they're frozen. telling me I'm frozen. Oh, gosh. You're there you go. Everyone's chatting. I know, Everyone's but chatting. they're saying I'm frozen. Am I frozen now? Am I frozen? You know okay. what? I've had a lot of problems with that because yes. um, I don't know. Whenever I read my message from Spirit, everyone's like, oh, my God, you just froze. You just froze. So. All right. So I need to text them back and say now. You know why? Because... Oh, and it froze on an extremely unflattering image. No, I'm good. That was a terrible way to get frozen. That's okay. Just sing your way through. Fine. People are saying, no, we're not frozen. Oh, that's so funny. Okay, so give me two more seconds. I'm sorry. Technical challenges, please. Oh, we're back now. It says it's all good. We're good. Of course we're it good. We're back. Facebook user for me. So oh, I don't know whether it's the fact that. There. I found it. Yeah. Oops. Okay, hold on. You know what? I have a lot of. How do I mute myself? Because. You just, so just turn your phone down, Liz. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, there we go. So I can see. Liz, I love you. Them. Oh, look what Facebook brought back. They brought back that availability to bring somebody on camera. Oh, really? And you know, they had it away for a while, but now it's back again. Oh, All wow. good now. You're not frozen. Elias Patrick. I know. He's been in some of my teachings, you know. Um, and Elias, you've been amazing. He's yeah. amazing. He is. Okay, so who's here? Cheryl's here. Kathy's here. Mercedes is here. Lana's here. Jennifer's here. Do you need technical support? No, we're okay, James. And Janice did her nail yesterday. She watched my Facebook Live and she said, I've got to do my nail. I do my nails. That's my thing. And you did it on Facebook Live? No. Oh, gosh, no. I but I am, support, I am sporting the new look. It's the new fashion craze of roots. No, no, no. 
I just did mine myself. Oh no, my hairdresser will go crazy. She's already told me, do not touch it. No, no, here's the deal. Here's what you have to do, okay? Sorry, sorry people, but we have to discuss this. You have Chris help you. He helped me, right? Let me show you this, okay? That's the back of my yeah. hair. Okay, so this is Chris's styling. So I have an undercut, right? I have an undercut. Oh, that's right. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God, he, oh, he showed it. He, he is so short. He shaved your hair. You can tell he's in he's in the army. He's in the military, exactly. That's a yeah. freaking But look, I've got roots. Hey, you can just like cut it. Just trim yeah. it a little bit. No, 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 but I colored my own hair and Jeff did the back. Maybe I might. Maybe I maybe that's yeah. what I might do this weekend. Because I couldn't, you know, but I'm also one color. I don't have highlights. Oh, you see, I'm not. I, I like to be a little bit crazy. But that's yeah, fine. No, you can be a little bit crazy. Maybe I'll keep it out. Barbie, oh, Kathy's saying her daughter, yeah, but Kathy, Nicole is really, really, really gifted. She's like a really good, she's she's a spa girl. You know what my daughter is training to be a um, a hairdresser, but she's <gasps> at her friends right now. She's we quarantined her at her at her friends. Why? Because, well, because they're moaning. They were like two young girls. Me, I just wanted to see my friends, so we hooked up them together. They've been together for a month. Um, they're in their own house? Wait a minute, because she's a teenager. Yeah, so they're driving each other insane at somebody else's house, house thankfully. Two teenagers together? Well, no, I mean, they've got a, an adult. Oh, okay, good. I just wanted to make yeah. sure. They're, they're not with me, adult. though. They're with somebody else. There's an adult. There's an adult there. An adult? <laughs> so that actually allows me to be with my husband. Oh, yes. So yeah. Quite. Well, where's Charlie? Char well, Charlie's not at 20 now. He's, oh, he's an old man. He's an old boy now. He's working, he's off doing his thing and whatever. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, I just decided I'm going to come and be with my husband, me and the dogs. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, it's great. I love Your it. Your great dog is adorable, the, the pit bull, my right? My pit bull. I oh, my adorable. God. Where is he? He's such a sweetheart. He's here, you have to actually. Be a dog, you guys. Let me just see if I can move him. He's adorable. He's like what? Seven or eight years old. Oh, where's he's the ten. baby? Hi. Yeah, he's ten. So my pit bull. He's ten, and I inherited him. So I inherited him when uh, Chris's wife passed away. That's right. That's right. Um, I inherited a fourteen-year-old child and um 14 year old girl and i called my mom up and i went mom i'm sorry she said what for i said for being 14 and a girl she went calm as a bitch and uh <laughs> and, then, you know, and then i had george yeah and uh i already had two, two dogs at that point you had your had, one because but you i know were, yeah we had to sedate him for the first two weeks because he was like he just had never had any any contact with any other dogs before and now him and Max are like the best of friends. They're so adorable. He's friend. adorable. I mean, he's a sweetheart. Yeah, he is. He's such a sweetheart. Okay, so everybody's here. Shani is here. Michelle is here. Everybody's here. Hello, everybody's here. everyone. He's so handsome, they're saying. He's so handsome. Hello from Florida. You both are so beautiful. Thank you, Elena. <laughs> That's so sweet. Yeah, Kerry, teen, three teen girls, so you know my pain. Oh, my God. Yes. Okay, so let's talk about something other okay. than ourselves. <laughs> no, we could do. We're just going to talk about our hair and ourselves. Why not? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we came, we all came, we are gathered here today for Deep Wisdom with Lisa Williams. Yay! Yay! <laughs> okay, so, so it, you did a Soul Fest interview. Mm -hmm. And during your Soul Fest interview, you talked about the importance of during really, really, really heavy traumatic times when our loved ones come to us. And, and why, why is it important? Like when, when you talk about communication with the spirit world, what do you think the biggest gift, your gift is to humanity and to people? Uh, well, I mean, I guess it, there's many things, really. It's one, knowing that there's a continuation of life, that it doesn't just stop here in the here and now. Um, so knowing that they're okay, knowing that you'll see them again, and knowing that where you go, um, you know, when you 
when you move into the transitional life, whatever you want to call it, that you're going to be okay. But I think there's there's also a much bigger thing in realizing that we are, you know, especially in this moment in time, so many people are saying, yes, but what about this? And everyone's thinking blinkered. And I'm like, broaden it out because when we look back and see the bigger picture on life, we're all equal, we're all the same, and we all, there's two things that we can guarantee, death and taxes, and we can't escape either one of them, okay? We just I'm can't. I'm to escape my taxes this year. Yeah, we just can't. But <laughs> in that space, what we're doing is, it's, we're, I guess we're normalizing the transition of death, and we're making people realize that they're still there with us, if you are having a tough time, they're still with you. If you need help, they're still there. If you need guidance, you can still tap in. So I feel like there's so many valuable moments that you can have still with a loved one because what they're doing is they're able to help guide you from the other side. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess so many people need that. And we've become, we come into this simple life and spirit always say to me, you know, I've been doing these, like messages from spirit. I mean, there's 40 odd messages here. Um, and in those messages, they just keep saying, become simple, come back into that simple life. Because when you're simple, you're clearing away the mess, you're getting rid of the busyness, and you're coming back into that connection where you are able to connect to self, soul, and spirit. And I think that is so valuable. And I, I you know, connecting with spirit is, is powerful as well. Well, one of the things that you said on your Soul Fest video that I absolutely loved is that when we're when shit's hitting the fan, and that's those weren't your words. That's I didn't say words, that. A potty mouth. I have a potty mouth. I have the biggest potty mouth, but I'm the so biggest good. potty mouth. No, I have the biggest potty mouth. Okay. Anyway, so when <laughs> shit hits the fan, okay. Um, basically, what happens is, and he shared this is that when we have our loved ones come to us. It's such an enormous, enormous comfort. Oh, it's an enormous comfort. I had this happen yesterday. Um, this woman who's studying to be a spiritual medium, just on the phone with her rand randomly, all of a sudden she starts tuning into my mom. And a lot of people do that to me, right? Yeah. This woman is accurate. <laughs> this wow. woman is right on. And there was something, the way she just expressed it and the way she said it was just like this comfort, like, okay, mm -hmm. mom's got my back. Yeah. She's got this going on right now. So it really is a big comfort. And I just want to share with everybody, we're supposed to be, we're going to be announcing, so you don't know this, Lisa, because I forgot to tell you this before we went live. Okay. So we're announcing the winner, we, we sent out the survey for the Soul Fest and anybody who filled it out, we were going to pull a winner to win two tickets to a Celebrate Your Life live event. Oh, wow. Can I put my name in? Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a different arrangement. You come and work it. <laughs> so I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to text you the name and then okay. you're going to announce it. At the I time. am? Okay. Okay. Everybody, Lisa's going to announce it. Okay. Lisa's Perfect. Going I can do that. Winner. So don't go anywhere. We're going to do it at the end of the broadcast. Okay. Right. So, so question for you. I have ten. And if anybody has a general question about communication, not don't ask for readings right now. But if you have a general question about communication with the spirit world, what I'd like you to do is go ahead and put it in the comments because we are reading the comments. I am seeing one. It says, "Do you think that most of us knew uh, that uh, life does not end with with death? This pan pande uh, pandemia would taken different would have been taken a different way. Fear is killing people. You know what? I actually feel that that's very true. The f and it's it's so funny because uh, Spirit has been talking about this today about how um, there is hope. And I, I just read I channel messages every single day." And he said, there is hope, there is a tomorrow, there is a survival, but you need to listen. It's not doom, it's hope that you're all hearing, knowing that you're changing in a way that is positive for all, and knowing it's going to be different, but with a brightness and a future that's going to be stable. I love that. Yeah. And I love that. And, so, and is that the information you're getting about what's going on in the world? Yeah, right? I mean. With this virus? There are, 
this is all information about the virus, which wow. has just been channeled. Um, and it's really about how, you know, and it, it basically went on to say uh, in here that this virus happened because the world needed to stop. We had to get back down to basics. We had to heal the world. We had to change the world in the way that it needed to be. We've had so much healing. And this is a reset. They called it a reset. So therefore, we were able to completely reset the world and change not only how we live, let's look at the oceans, let's look at the air pollution, let's look at all of those things, but the fact that we're all actually equal. And it's funny because every day at three o'clock on my, on my website, I've been doing my cards. And I, we had this card that keeps coming out um, and it keeps, uh, I'll show it to you, but it is the equal card. And basically it's this equal card where we're all equal because we're all in the same space. I know. And I've got a friend of mine who's in Saudi Arabia right now. And, you know, they're all shut down. Everywhere around the world is shut down. And everyone is fighting this pandemic. But we're all equal. We're actually stopping. We're actually becoming all human rather than the ego. We're coming into the soul. We're coming into love. And it's really just in that time of like, we're just all equal right now. It's sort, um, of level, it's sort of leveled the playing field. In it a really sense. has. It really and has. It needed to happen. Um, and this is what Spirit was saying, how, and they said it way back on, on day four, that that we really needed to stop. We really needed to stop and listen and, you know, change, that we're all collective parts of the universe and we have the opportunity to change this in so many ways. And that's what we're doing. That's exactly what we're doing. Now, I know you can't really predict this because I know the energy shifts with this, but when do you see this lifting to where, people can start getting back to work and people can start, I mean, well, we're still working, but working from home, but you know, maybe um, having a celebrate your life live event. You know, I, I, I would wish I could say it's gonna be this year. I hope it's gonna be this year, I really do. Mm -hmm. But I also feel, and I, I can't predict because it's always gonna change, but I do feel that by June, we're gonna have play, things in place that we are gonna be able to start moving back into society and i won't say but we're going back with a new normal absolutely and i do feel towards the end of the year you know i've got an event book for september i've got events booked in august i'm hoping that they're going to go ahead but again in the larger stuff um i'm hoping that by the end of the year or towards the end of the year so let's keep our fingers crossed for the one that you've got with elizabeth gilbert do you see a second, somebody's asking, do you see a second or third wave of the virus? I think, so it was interesting because Spirit did come uh, through with a with something that came through and I would not read it. And the reason why I wouldn't read it was because it came through with a, um, in a way, let me just see if I can find it. It came in a way where I was like, oh, I'm not sure I wanna read that. Mm -hmm. um, but it was basically, and I can actually, it, it showed that I'm just trying to find it that it showed that there was going to be something if we release ourselves into the into the world if we went into the world too quickly we would be in problem we would have problems um okay. so it's something that it, it was something that was going to be i don't know it was just very very difficult it, it's going to be difficult um it's almost like the energy hasn't been determined yet. Yeah, it hasn't been determined. I'm trying to find it actually, but it, it's it's a powerful thing. Yeah, it's really powerful. I think I would like to say no. I don't think it's going to happen. I do think it will. I do think that there could be another way, not right. as not as crazy, but yeah, not as huge as this. No, 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 no. You just you know this is this is exactly why we have you. You know. This is why you're so gifted. Uh, you know, you know, I know. No, but it helps to prepare us. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, I'm trying to find so, so if you know that there might be a second wave, then just take caution. Yeah, just take or caution. If there's even a, a suspicion of it. Just take caution. Yeah, just take caution. Running out to, to, to a club or running out to a really crowded restaurant. The yeah. first thing that everybody says, okay, we can go out now. Don't it's do it. Not, it's not like being grounded by your parents and all of a sudden yeah. you're not grounded by your parents. Yeah, don't do it. Yeah, it's not. But it did say, I, I can't find it, but basically it did say, don't don't rush out too quick and don't get yourself, you know, blasé. Be cautious because there is going to be another wave of something. Okay. So another user just asked, 
do you think we will treat our earth better after this virus or go back to old ways? Um, I actually think that we have to treat our earth better. I do. I truly do. And I think what's it's going to see, you're always going to have people that will abuse. You can't change that. But I do feel that what's going to happen is people are starting to be a little bit more cautious, a little bit more aware. Um, I do feel that there is going to be moments that we are get, there is going to be abuse. You can't change that because you can't control everyone. But again, if you take that moment and 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 think, well, look at what's around. Look at the air quality in LA. Look at the pollution. Look at all of these things. You will actually find that we are going to be changing the way that we're going. And not only that, I do feel that we we are. I do feel it. And this is what I've been shown is that people are going to start recycling. People are going to start looking a bit more eco. And people are going to be moving in that direction anyway. So I do think it's going to be happening. Now, I'm vegan. So there's a lot of talk about, you know, vegans and, you know, the, the, the virus and, the, and the, um, you know, the farming of animals as well. And I think you're, you're starting, we've, certainly in the vegan community, I've started to see a shift. More people going vegan or vegetarian um, over these last three months than I have seen in, in a long time. Maybe it's just because I'm so aware of it. Interesting you said that because Jeff just turned to me the other day because we've been, I've been vegetarian, I've been vegan, I've been a meat eater, I've been like all over the yeah. all over the places he has been too. And he said to me the other day, you know, I'm not feeling like meat again. And I'm like, yeah, I know. So I made this massive pot of vegan soup. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's really good. Nice. Yeah. I, so I do think there's going to be a big shift. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Because we need it. And, you know, the, what I kind of got, I was sitting and meditating the other day. It's really interesting that people are being told to stay inside, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what if we, let's think about that. We're being told to stay inside. We shouldn't, we should be outside. Right, but it's but it's an opportunity for us to, to go, to go in. To go I deep, agree. To go it is. And you know what, again, I go back to this because this is this is the only thing I can go to. Oh, um, I want a copy of this. They have... They have actually said, it's funny because they said today, strive for a future, make plans for today, letting go of the past uh, that has created the person that you are, but break the mold and be who you want to be and shine brightly. You are the hope of tomorrow. You are not the ghost of the past, but the sun of tomorrow for generations to come as your love will shine on. Because it's about really going deep. What is? And it's funny because they started off saying, um, open your eyes to the moments that you have to create your new reality and what you want to achieve in the world. Who do you want to be? What do you want to be known for? What is your legacy? You have this time in the, in the world to create anything you want to be in the world. And it's so powerful. It's so amazing what they're, what they're saying because that's exactly what it is. It's like go within, live today, but create who you want to be in the world exactly. because you've got the opportunity. This is, I mean, this is massive. If you, You've got the opportunity to look at your whole world and go, I may not like my job. It's been a job. So what inspires me? What takes me that way? What can I learn right now? What can I heal right now? What can I get rid of? Who can I get rid of? And there are, <laughs> there are these things that people, are, they're stuck in this fear zone. And I did something recently talking about the four keys of um intuitive manifestation we did a, a online webinar on sunday and i had all these 800 people and they were empowering and they were all thinking like i don't know how to do this and by the end of it i we got them to the point that they could create their life that they wanted to create and they were so inspired so geared up and it was an incredible and i don't feel that people People are just been like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. But instead, if they sit with their soul and they're opening themselves up to so much other opportunities, they're going to have a whole world ahead of them. Exactly. Uh, Lori Reynolds just shared that she's been taking spiritual courses nonstop. And I know, Lisa, oh. you've been teaching a lot of courses. If you want to learn more about that, go to lisawilliams.com. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> she's, she's teaching all kinds of great courses. Oh, oh okay. so much, yeah. So there's some questions about spiritual medium. Sure. Uh, astrologically there's a second awareness oh somebody talked Lori's talked about astrology yeah. here we're taking part in history yes we are are taking part in history most definitely this is going to be written in the history books oh, this is just okay. time to be honest and open about everything right now it's what did she say 
it's it's that's danielle said something oh right and honest about everything right now it's appreciated yes she's encouraging you <laughs> okay so do you feel like doing a few readings sure why not okay you always so, got cards now? yes let's do your cards let's do the cards someone did ask earlier when someone has recently passed and i know this to be true so i'm going to answer you joni joni asked if if somebody's just recently passed can they communicate with the spirit world with from the spirit world right away? And I know that to be true because my mom did. Absolutely. And actually, well, while it's funny because a friend of mine texted me today and said her, her dad died today and she wanted a reading. But I will actually always encourage someone to get um, their healing first. So I will always encourage them to have a little bit of a break before they have a reading. But there are circumstances that I will naturally do a reading for. The only reason why I suggest that people have a break and they not reach out for, to a spiritual medium is for your own healing. It's not because they can't communicate. It's for you to have that healing. That's all. Um, and that's what you need. Um, because otherwise, and I have been that psychic junkie, ironically, um, where I have held on and done so many readings, so many readings, so many readings. I don't want to be that person that enables someone that says, I can't get through life without the communication of my mom and dad or my brother, my aunt, whoever it is. Yeah. And it's a, it's a very, there is a massive, and this is the thing that not many people realize, and this is why I talk about it, is there are so many people who are psychic junkies in the world. And I am not saying that, that, your viewers are and i'm not saying that my viewers are because they're not but i will tell you as a former psychic junkie my name's lisa williams and i was a psychic junkie um but it's true i was having up to four to five readings a day a day on the phones i was seeing people wow. i was going i was so desperate in wow. my life that i needed so and I was working as a psychic. But you know what? I have to tell you, I I, I did this same thing at one point in my life. Yeah. I was like a reading junkie. Yeah. 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 And that's why I said, you know, sometimes we have to. That's why I always put a boundary up, and I said, I will not read for anyone after, you know, in a six month period. So you're only allowed to one reading with me every six months, or you know, and if someone has just passed, I encourage you to wait three months before you get a reading for your Absolutely. own mental health and your own grieving process. And one of the things that I did, you know, I've only, I've had a couple of big losses. My biggest loss was really um, yeah. when Ariel, my mom passed mom. and she was my business partner, best friend, etc. What I realized and what was so interesting to me is that I didn't, I didn't run to somebody for a reading. And at the, at the time Doreen was still practicing. Um, and I remember she came in right away and of course shared some information with me. But what I did is I continued the conversation with my mom. Yes. I continued the conversation and she sent me, I mean, sign after sign after sign. I mean, you know this with, with Summer Over the Rainbow. Yeah, she, I know. she was a musician, so she would send me music. So I, I believe the best way to, to continue the to continue having messages come through is to continue the conversation with your loved one. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's one sure. of the most powerful ways. And you know what I always say to people is to write, write them letters, write them letters, you know, just like you might be in a journal, but write them letters. Hey mom, guess what happened today? This happened, this happened, this happened. And when you're able to write to them and talk to them like they were on the phone, it changes everything because it gives you that peace and comfort that they are listening you then you might see a sign you might look up see 11 11 or 222 or you might see a car that they used to drive and you're like oh wow and when you act when that actually happens you know it makes you realize that you're you might be sending it out into the universe but the universe is answering you back to yes yes and i and i love that I love yeah. that. and it doesn't come in the way. I, there is somebody I, I would love for you to tune into. Um, Leslie, I see your I see your message on here. Um, Leslie has a granddaughter, Caitlin. Okay. That passed November twenty one. Okay, I can, oh, I, can, I can see that, but she's just Facebook user for me. 
So let me go on. And she was five years old. Right. Let me go on to that. Okay. So let me let me find. Let me come on to the soul first page. There we go. Um, get it on your phone. It's a little bit easier on your phone. Yeah, it is. It's going to be a little bit easier. But I might be able to find it here. So it's That's okay. Um, Leslie, are you still there? It doesn't. Let me know that you're still there, so she can. Yeah, that's oh, fine. Liz Williams is there. Hi, Liz Williams. I know. I because I I think you see I think you see different. Um, so let me let me connect in. What's her name? Leslie. Leslie. Oh, there you are, Leslie. Yay! Yeah. I love you. All right. Um, and it's so so silly. Sometimes just seeing the name actually helps me. Okay, so um, I'm not sure why, but here's what I keep seeing: is I kept feeling as though this. Uh, and you might have to, you might actually have to verify stuff that I'm, you know, that uh, in the chat. Um, but what I just kept being shown is, I'm not sure if she passed very, very suddenly, but there's a feeling that, no, actually, I feel as though there was a, I don't know, a build up to it. But she, she gives me a great deal of, I want to say a great deal of fun, this, this young, uh, she's just very fun. I'm not sure if she was a lot of fun. Uh, so Leslie, just confirm as I'm going along. But I just keep seeing a lot of fun. What I'm also being shown here is she's she's got this big radiant smile about her is the only way I can explain it. Like this big cheesy smile. But I do feel as though there may have been difficulties in her life. I'm not sure if there was. But she just keeps showing me. She keeps sh talking about rainbows. Um, there you go. She's got, yes. There's um. She keeps talking about rainbows. So there may be... Um, a feeling of that she sends you rainbows. And I know that we've just talked about somewhere over the rainbow, but I just want to talk, give you the actual rainbow. I do want to give you the actual color of the rainbow. And I keep wanting to say music and I want to say dancing because I just feel as though I want to, uh, I don't know whether it's like I'm dancing to Frozen or Let It Go, Let It Go, whatever. Aww. But I just want to say that I want to dance um in that way and, and i just keep seeing this absolute love now here's what's also interesting she's showing me that somebody either has a um like a friendship bracelet or some beads or it might be beads around the neck but i'm also being shown that there may be someone that has a tattoo for her as well and that there's also a picture um i want to talk about the picture that has changed i don't know whether someone drew the picture uh, but there's something about this but she's just given a great deal of love um that she gives a great deal of love out to you and mom as well because she wants me to bring it out to mom and the family so it's very important and happy birthday i'm not sure whose birthday it is or what the birthday might mean um but i just kept being shown the, the birthday so mwah, from your granddaughter did you okay she she yes, her mom, mom got a tattoo that's what she, yes she, she her mom got a tattoo is what she's saying there you Did go. That for you, Leslie. I hope so. I'm not yeah. really seeing much on here. I, that's what I've got. So I, you know, she does. She does. Yeah. Schaefer. Yes. So she says yes. Oh, oh thank good. you. You're thank welcome. You. My pleasure. Yeah. A sort of sweetheart. Just an actual sweetheart. Ah. Um, yeah, it's amazing. It's so. It's so. You know, when someone loses a just somebody else on here that lost a child. Right. You know, which so if somebody loses a child, Joanne, where did she go? Joanne Louise. I talk to my son who has passed almost every day and I have written him a letter. I miss him in as much as I would she would like a reading, but I can't see the rest of her the comment, but yes. So it's Joanne Louise. Joanne or is it Joan? But I think it's Joanne. J O A N N E. Yep. Uh, there? Hold on a second. Yeah, I can see her. Um, so okay. I'm not sure. I don't know whether this is. Oh. Yeah. Jan Janice, Janice, Janice. It's the 10 year anniversary. Our Janice. Oh, okay. Well, well let me just. Janice okay. next. Let's go to Joanne. Okay, Janice. Yes. Yeah. She's got a sneeze. God bless you. <laughs> I always say we sneeze on the truth. We sneeze oh. on the truth. We sneeze on the truth. See, Janice? I don't know why. Um, okay, so this, and when I get, when I start sneezing, when my nose got, starts running, it's like spirit coming through. Um, 
really attractive, honestly. Sometimes it's so attractive. Okay, snack. We all have snack. Honestly, it's so attractive. Now I look like Rudolph. Okay, so um, let me. You know what? I'm gonna go with Janice first because I feel connected. I, I've got another woman here before I got a boy. Um, and what I've got, I'm not sure how old your sister was, Janice, and I, I really don't need to know. But she's <laughs> she's coming swanning in, and I want to say she's swanning in. I want to have a glass in my hand, and I just feel like I need to actually cheers you for some reason. So it's like this cheers, this clink. Um, and what she's at, she keeps saying thank you. Um, I'm not sure if you helped her, Janice, but there was a feeling. Did she have cancer? I mean, Liz, do you know this? Because I don't know. Uh, yes, because she just kept giving me cancer. Yes. And what she just kept giving me was this cancer. And she's showing me how, Janice, you must have helped her through this. Or there was a feeling of actually constantly help, constantly help. You were there. You were there. You were there. To the point that I almost feel like you mocked her brow or you did something with her hair. And she, she just kept showing me here that the um, being aware, being, being um, I don't know how to explain it, but being a, you know, rubbing and, and being there. And she's just, I'm not sure if Janice's mom has passed over, but she's just actually said that I'm with mom as well. Um, so she wants you to know that um, that she's with mom here um, and that, that it's so important that you know that, um, that she's with mom. Knowing that, and here's what's interesting, um, your sister helped this young girl come in. I'm not sure why, so thank you to your mom. To her for bringing that in but with regards to your sister she's also I'm not sure if you've had a bad leg recently um, Janice because she keep or a bad foot or you've something that's going on with your ankle but she's just saying to you can you get your foot done can you get it done said Janice your ankle yeah ankle. And she, okay and she's also saying will you change your chair Will you change your chair? I don't know what that means. So yeah. are, you, are you sitting on an uncomfortable chair right now? Or I don't know. We've been, we've been at, maybe it's Janice. Do you think it's your chair at work in the office or where you're working right now? But she's talking about your it's, chair. It's almost like now. I feel as though she's just sat somewhere and it's like uncomfortable. And she's like, she's not doing anything. She's not doing anything to help herself is what I just keep being shown. Um, and all I just keep being shown is that she needs to change her chair. And stop moaning about it. Just get on and do it. There's her ankle. Uh, and start doing something about it because she's laughing. Um, but she's actually smiling here. Beautiful set of teeth. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, there you go, Tanya. You said go and get your work right, chair. You know, screaming about She's been bitching about the chairs at work. Oh, we can't she we cannot find comfortable chairs in the office. Oh, okay. So it's almost yeah. it's almost like make sure that you change your chair. And it's it's funny, but she's also saying to Janice, eat the chocolates. And I'm she's giving me chocolates. <laughs> like chocolates in my mouth. And because I don't eat chocolate. So I all of a sudden I've tasted this like chocolate filled with like yummy stuff. Um it's like <laughs> take the chocolate filled with yummy stuff because she's actually showing me that, that she eat the chocolate it's so funny because we eat we have that's our thing in the office we're always like yelling about okay who's got the chocolate where's the chocolate diane did you buy more chocolate oh that's so funny and i just kept tasting strawberry so i'm not sure if janice loves a strawberry or a strawberry is a thing but i just ate it was like a strawberry or a cherry kind of thing but that's what was coming to me Her birthday um it was janice's birthday not too long ago and we sent her an edible arrangement with chocolate strawberries and chocolate, oh. covered, bananas and chocolate covered pineapple. And, yeah. Oh, that's what it is. And so it's, it's just like beautiful. It's, it's like beautiful, but she just, and it, it's like, she was clinking the champagne glass and she was saying, I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. And Janice, I've got to tell you, she loves the t-shirt. So I'm not sure if you're wearing the t-shirt or if the t-shirt is significant, but she loves the t-shirt. Do you have t-shirts? She's got great t-shirts and she gets oh, like she... t-shirts made. Like she, she puts say like different things on them. Which t-shirt is that? Janice, what do you think that refers to? Okay, she said, she said, go Susie, we love chocolate. Yes. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Her mom is here also, Jay. Is your mom still with, is her mom still Yeah, with? her mom's still here. Her mom, but her mom's quieter. Her mom's quieter. 
meaning the fact that it's almost like she's pushing her sister through. Um, but what, what she's showing me here is that actually your mom would be, I don't know whether there's three girls or there's three daughters or four. I feel as though there's more, there's, there's girls, girls. And oh, six, there's girls. Six, right? So your mom had so much to deal with, like with all of these girls. It's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Because she just kept showing me, there's the team t-shirt, but she just kept showing me that it's so important to um, to realize that she had all of these girls. Thank you. She just said that you were blessed with boys and that they're not as difficult as the girls. <laughs> So stop moaning about them is what she just said. So stop moaning about them. So All right. you know, that's your voice. All right. I don't know. So yeah. she just kept showing me. Yeah. I know Janice, but I don't know. No, no, Janice. I mean, obviously, right. but yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. that was great. Yeah. Oh, round of applause. Yeah, I just do my thing. I love it. That was really good. And you're oh. really damn good at it. <laughs> well, kind of. And you know what's funny is I didn't really yeah. open up properly. It's so funny. Uh, I always do this like a little intention, little prayer behind the scenes. And you guys see it, so I, I would start pacing and I would do my thing. But, you know, I, it's just getting yourself into into that sort of like moment, that space, that kind of vibe of like, okay, come on, anyone wants to join the party? And it's not the fact that you, I can't just I, – I, I, John Holland says it lovely. It's like, it's like I don't have 1-800-DAL-THE-DEAD. I love it, you know, how he says that. Sometimes if I feel it, I have to go with it. If I don't feel it – it's like I wanted to try and get that boy in, but it's like Janice's sister came in. Well, and you, she's you just not, yeah, and she's not here on the feed. But, and that's what's so amazing to me is that you can't like necessarily force it. It either comes through or the person is yeah, there. Yeah, it, it comes, you know, and it's it's really, it's it's not always easy for me as a person. It's really hard because I want to help so many people and I want to give to so many people. And I, I know I overextend myself. But when, you know, I really want to connect with everyone. That's the reason why I say it's always important for you to look for the signs, look for these things. There might be something I've said in Janice's reading that will be like, oh, my God, my mum used to do that. Or like for you, Liz, when I about that young girl, I said the rainbow. And those are the little things that you have to um, sort of say for yourself, you know, that you have to kind of just go, well, that's my little message for me too. Um, and I think it's really important to actually take that little message for you because they're all trying to help each other out. We're exactly. all trying to get the message through. Exactly. Oh, yeah. exactly. Do you see do you see the woman who's talking about where's her name? There she is, Jill. They lost somebody to COVID nineteen. Oh no, that's so sad. Um that's awful. They had a beautiful celebration of life for her. Her family couldn't see her for six weeks due to the virus. Oh, that's so sad. You know, when it when that happens, and I've had a lot of people who have reached out to me who've had COVID-19, who have lost people. Um, and I always say that, that when you can celebrate, you're going to have a damn good celebration at that point. You know, and it's really mm -hmm. about allowing that celebration because, you know, COVID-19 has happened. We can't control it. Um, sadly, yes, people are dying, but there's also people dying of various different other things. It, it's, it's now, sadly, a way that people are going to pass. Um, but it's honoring them. It's how we honor them that's the most important thing. So it's about maybe putting them, you know, like a, a memory thing up on the wall or it might be writing the letters or it might be you know holding a zoom little gathering it's how we celebrate them and it is so hard because i have mm -hmm. it so many times where people say do they know that i wasn't there or were they aware of it and and sadly spirit will often say to me i knew you weren't there but don't worry and mm -hmm. i have to tell you it's very rare it's very rare that they go you know what? You weren't there, and I'm happy with you. It's very rare that that happens, unless you get a narcissist as a mother who hasn't changed. But it's <laughs> it, it's really rare that people say, you know, I know that you weren't there. They often say, listen, I know you weren't there, and I know you couldn't be there. Or they'll often say, it didn't hurt. And that's the thing. In our human mind, we think, we 
we overthink and we think, oh my God, it must have hurt. But the times that I have said to someone, listen, it didn't hurt. There was nothing that you could do. They were totally, uh, they weren't aware or they slipped away. Um, and it, it's, it's incredible. So we feel guilty. Our human mind feels guilty about it. But I also know that sometimes you actually have to realize that you're trying to keep you safe too. Um, and that's what came through in a, in a recent communication that I had with someone when they said, listen, I didn't want to see my family because I didn't want them to go the same way that I did. Ah. And that was powerful. That was really, really powerful. Wow. wow. Yeah. You know, a lot of people are, are asking, like Lori just asked about her husband that died six years ago. They were together for 24, 22 years. She misses his support. Um, a lot of the, the, the questions, and Joni talks about she lost two people to COVID-19, it's very sad. A lot of people ask the questions about being able to communicate on our own with, with our loved ones. And yeah. I, I, I would like to share because my experience, because remember I've been studying and been at your workshop, at John's workshops, at Colette's workshops, at Denise's workshops for 25 years, I've been studying with these guys. And, and, and it really wasn't, it, for me, this wasn't put to the test until I lost, Ar until Ariel transitioned. Yeah. And here's, here's what I do now, because my mother was, so, so for those of you who really don't know who my mom and I were, my mom, Ariel Wolf, was um, my business partner. We started Mishka Productions in 1995 which soon became Celebrate Your Life events. It's the same company, Mishka Productions was named after our dog Mishka. And we were very, very close. We were extremely connected. She was one of my soulmates in this lifetime. I absolutely believe that. Um, we were more like sisters and best friends. And she was also one of my greatest spiritual teachers. Mm -hmm. And so when she transitioned, it was, and weirdly enough, she and my biological father hadn't spoken in probably 45 years. He passed five months before she did. Wow. Yeah, and I heard about it. At, at any rate, so one of the things that I do that is really, really valuable, first of all, I continued the conversation. And when I sit in meditation and I sit in stillness, complete and total stillness, get my mind into stillness, get my mind extremely quiet, and I just ask and I just tune into my mom's energy and I ask her to come through. I ask questions and I will get answers. But, but I believe that we have to get out of our heads because I'm not a spiritual medium, but I think we have to get out of our heads in order to allow that information to come through. So I'm going to ask you for confirmation on that. And maybe you can give us a little bit of exercise too. Oh my gosh. It, it is our heads overcomplicate everything. Because, and this is the problem, when I know something, when I know too much, I, I worry because I'm like, oh, yeah, but I know that, I know that, I know that. And so our head will screw us up. So the best thing actually to do is just to write everything down. I have little post-it notes up. Um, and all these post-it notes up are things that I think are going to happen, that I feel are going to happen, that are coming up. And I feel as though that's, that's one of the things that I do just as a way of surrendering. That word surrender is probably the hardest thing to <laughs> understand. And this is how I've put it, because when, and now there is no two, le there's not a left side and a right side, there's not a creative side, there's not that logical side as we all know, it is a one whole thing. But when that logical part of the brain, when the part that runs the, you know, the logic, that's our safety. But when we have that moment of um, creativity, we're seeing things, we're feeling things, our logical part of the brain basically goes, yeah, but you could be wrong. Yes, but, yes, but, yes, but. No. And it's only when you understand the mechanics of it and you start to realize, and the, the sort of like the logical part of the brain just then, then says, oh, so you're doing that thing again. And then it actually helps that creative part helps the communication because what happens and let's just talk this is when i get messages i get all of these messages and i get this stuff coming in and then that logical part of my brain goes oh i wonder how they died i don't know let me go and find out so then that creative part of my brain just sort of says 
so what, what, what happened? What, what? Oh, well, you know, I did this and this happened. And so then it helps me. My logical part starts going, well, I wonder, I wonder. And it starts you wondering. So there's a lot of teachers that will say to you, I'll get out of your left side of the brain, which, which is apparently the logical side, but it's not that way. It's like all the neurons are firing off at once. And really what we have to do is we have to kind of use the whole of it. We have to be ready to question, but what do you mean? And right. so, but knowing that we're safe doing it. So it's that part of surrender is actually feeling safe feeling safe in doing what you do and realizing, you know, it's okay to be batshit crazy. I speak to dead people. Have you not thought I'm batshit crazy? Absolutely. But, you know, I'm dead, I, that's what I do. But it's really important to, for, to normalize communicating with the other side. And that's what I try to do. Because if we normalize it and make it feel, hey, you know what, I'm normal. This is what I'm doing. Right. Who cares? I it's always nice. say, join me in my circle of weirdness where we're all normal. Yes, I'm in your circle of weirdness. Yeah, we're all normal. Listen, I've I'm got to say of the weirdness, okay? <laughs> I've got to say this because I've got this guy that is here and he's not leaving. So I'm going to open this up to everybody. Listen to this. This guy loved classic cars. And I'm not sure if he had a classic car, but I keep showing me a classic car. And he also gives me the, word, the color blue. Now, I could be wrong with the color blue, but I just kept being shown. And if you can relate to it, please go, it's me. Um, because I just kept seeing this classic car and I'm almost feeling like he is of your generation. Um, I'm not sure if he's your brother or your husband. He could even be younger than you. Um, but I just kept being shown classic cars are very, very important. So does anyone understand that? Because it's driving me insane. Anyone out there? Under, and we're going to get to the suicide question, you guys. We're going to ask Lisa about that in a second. But does anybody have someone who's passed? Classic cars. Classic cars were really important to him. And the color blue. Anything about classic cars? Does that? And there's something about the celebration. I'm not sure if there's two celebrations, meaning that you both shared a birthday or it's the fact that he passed or someone passed near someone's birthday. Anyone. Uh, no. My friend who passed from classic cars, Lynn Slauson. My okay. friend who passed love classic cars. Lynn, does this make sense, the fact that there is a similarity about the birthdays or there's, a, um, there's something about the birthdays, the connection with the birthdays? I'm seeing all the, the things come up. If you can just... Because what he shows me is that he passed very quickly as well. And I feel like he didn't get a chance to say goodbye. Uh, okay. Oh, look at that. Collected models. He had a blue car. He passed just after his birthday. Okay. Who is, who is this? Uh, who is this? Because I can't it's, see him. That's Lynn. All oh, right. Is that Lynn? I think that was Lynn. My dad had a, I asked him, oh, where did it go? Lynn, was that you who said that? Because we're seeing it in, in one feed, collected. Yeah, models. yeah, we're seeing it. Anyway, listen, he's just coming up and saying, I'm okay. And he just wants everyone to know. And it, it might be a general message for everyone because there might be a couple of people. But I just want everyone to know um, that it's really, oh, here we go. Oh, so many. My dad had classic cards. My mom passed, my mom passed, on, passed my on my birthday and had a blue Cadillac. Okay, listen, I'm just going to say. I had somebody as well. I'm just going to say, I've got this blue bloody car and this guy standing by the side of this car. I've got an M name, either a Mary, Mel, 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 Mel. Anyway, I've got this name and I want everyone to know I'm okay. And just because you weren't there, I don't know whether he passed really suddenly and there was a heart attack or something, but he just keeps saying, I'm okay and stop worrying. Oh. How specific and amazing. I don't know what that means, but anyway, take it. <laughs> take it. Because <laughs> he was driving me yeah, the anniversary of it. But do you see? So here, here's what Lisa always shares is that sometimes when spirit comes through, it's they come through intentionally because that's not just for one person. Yeah, so this could be for Lynn, this could be for Kim, this, this could be for Shani, this could be for Roseanne, this could be for so so many of you because Roseanne's last name is Minafo. All right, okay. So, yeah. 
Okay, so, that makes sense. Yes. And, it, and, and it's so funny how it can happen like that. And it's it's so powerful because it just proves the collective powerful spirit that we are. Because spirits, I tell you what's happening almost. It's like, so you had a classic coat, yeah, and, and me, I agree. all right, and, and you want to get mad, yeah, sure, come on, let's join in. And it's like they're all going in, boom, they're all coming in, and they're sending me the message, which is why it was so powerful, because I'm like, I cannot shake this person. It was so powerful that they had to get the message out. So I just wanted you, everyone to know wow. that, hey, they're all okay. And do you see what, what Lynn wrote? He always called me Ma Messy. Ma Miss Maisie, there you go. Maisie, as a pet name. A pet name. Yeah. That was a mic drop. Boom. 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 Okay, so everybody's anyway, asking yeah. about suicides. Suicide, and Tanya's talking about her brother who passed from an addiction. She felt like it was, he knew he would kept destroying his life. And then Kim mentioned, so there's a lot of suicide questions. So the question about suicide is when somebody passes from suicide, yeah. how do they feel about it once they've passed? Are, are they at peace? Are they, is it a, a relief? Um, Lori Reynolds has a brother who passed at 18 of suicide. So, so what about suicide? So listen, I, I, and I don't want to upset anyone. I can be very blunt because I deal with death every single day. However, what I do want to say is that there are times that um, suicide, I, I, let me start. I always believe that we've come in with a plan in our life, okay? We've come out with a plan. We are here for a life plan. We are here for a reason, whatever it might be. However, that does not necessarily mean that we have to stick to that plan. We can divert off that plan. Now, there could be a chance that we have to, that someone has to commit suicide, awful as it sounds, because it was written into their plan. And the two of you have said, listen, I need to commit suicide for you to learn this lesson and for you now to go and write that book. So therefore, you are going to change so many other people's lives based upon my passing. I've seen that happen. There are times where a suicide is unexpected. And it wasn't written in the contract, but they said, you know what, that's my, that's my free will. I have to tell everyone here, they do not go to a dark place. They go to exactly the same place that we all go to. They may have little lessons that they have to learn a little bit more than some people. But seriously, it's the tragedy that we are left with here that we have to deal with. And so... They're okay. I want you all to know that they're okay. It's us that we have to deal. So don't, don't worry about them. Heal you. Because I can guarantee you they're healing back there. They're healing on so many deep levels, but we actually have to do our healing. There is nothing, and I, I cannot tell you enough. I've done a lot of grief counseling in my time because obviously this is what I do there is nothing that you can do as a person as long as you have given whatever love out you can there is only so much that you can do as a person and you cannot control anyone else's actions you have to understand that this is you're in control of your actions you're not in control of anyone else's and so it is so, I had to deal with that because my own son, I was not sure whether or not I was gonna come home to find him in a wardrobe hanging himself, okay? Oh. And I had to come to terms with this. I sent him to counseling and he refused it, refused it, refused it. And so I went to counseling and I stopped counseling because I realized I had to get my head around the fact that that's his life plan. I cannot control him. He might be 19 at the time, 18, 19. I could not control it. All I could do was control the moments that I was with him and give him love. And that was what I had to get my head around. So realize that you need to heal. They're doing their healing. You take your time on healing. Wow. I love that. 
I it's really important. It's really I absolutely important. love that explanation because so many people suffer from it. And Michelle yeah. just shared that. She said, the suicide thing is challenging for me because my husband, who was very abusive, committed suicide 10 years ago. Lately, yeah. he's been bothering me and I want him to go. I've done my work on this, so I don't know why he's showing up now. Maybe so, to apologize. So let me let me tell you what you should do is you should give him you should give him time to um, you should speak to him, whether it is through a letter writing process. And this is what I teach: is get a blank piece of paper. And this is probably the best thing that I can say. And Joanne, I do want to say here, I know that you feel we've left you hanging. I can't speak to your son if he's not here. So will him to come through is all I'm going to say. All right, so this is your blank sheet. And I always say this is a great writing exercise because imagine that this could be your new bestseller. You have got the opportunity to write anything on this page and it can be as positive, as negative, as interesting, as whatever it is that you want to create. But in this moment, if you've got, if let's say your husband wants to say something, Michelle, seriously, say this is my opportunity and get a pen say this is your opportunity and i'm going to give it to you once what is it that you want to say mm. and you might hear individual thoughts you might hear a stream of thoughts you might hear a conscious you might feel something you might see something you might look at a light and go what why do i want to turn the light up write these things down because they may not make sense right now but when you come back this to this tomorrow the day after whatever it is you will find that will make sense and then you're giving him the opportunity to have voice otherwise he'll just keep bothering you oh <laughs> that's great okay michelle there's your assignment <laughs> okay yeah there's your assignment you gotta talk to him <laughs> yeah you gotta um, talk to him Tanya asked a question, and and uh, and I, Tanya, I can answer this for you. But she said, "Does it help people heal with grief once they grief once they've had a reading?" And it, it, yes, it does. I mean, I can only sleep healing. Yeah, I think it does. Um, but I do feel that sometimes it can also hinder you. Oh. and I really do. And this is the reason why when I teach my students, and I always teach this, I am carrying someone's life, someone's mental health in the palm of my hands. And for that period of time that I am with you and afterwards, I have to be careful in my terminology, in my communication. I have to be careful with absolutely everything that I come out with because I am carrying your life and I can damage you in a sentence. And so it can be healing, but if that medium doesn't quite know the art of communication and the art of message delivery, which is important, then they can screw someone up like that. You've got to be very, very discerning about very. the information that comes through. Very. And you've got to be very, very discerning about the person who does the reading. Very. Extremely discerning. Very. Because back in the day when I was first starting out in spirituality, um, a, a million years ago, there were a lot of people running around giving a lot of shitty messages. Yeah. So you've just got to be discerning. And I can't yeah. tell you after Ariel passed how many hundreds of people I had emailing yeah. me and coming up to me saying, your mom gave me a message and they've used it against me. Yeah, and I'm, I'm seriously, and I'm trying to tell you right now, I had a woman that I, and seriously, and it, it I was so shocked at this, mm -hmm. but I had a woman that I read for about 18 months ago, and it was in a large audience, much like I do at Celebrate Your Life, and I remember, and she said to me, apparently I said, your mom is at peace, your parents are at peace. Now for me, that would be, you know, they're fine, they're okay, they're at peace. But that, just that, had been haunted her for a year. And she came to me, the next time she saw me, she said, I have to ask you a question because it's been bothering me. And I said, okay, what is it? And she said, you told me that my parents were at peace. It's been bothering me. What does that mean? And I said, it's just knowing that they're okay. 
And she said, oh. and the, the relief off her shoulders just went, woof. And that was my fault as a reader for not asking her, do you understand that? Oh. You know, and in that moment, what tends to happen is, you know, I'll say, do you understand? And they're like deer in headlights. I mean, Liz, you've seen it. I've given readings and they're like, ah. And, you know, they're at there. Total psychosis. I'm like a I'm like a machine gun. Da, 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 the information comes out, but you know I didn't check in, and this is the reason why it can it can really really help someone, but it can also hinder you, yeah. and that's why I always say if you're gonna try and find a try and find a reader, sit with it. Just because your friend has had a reading with someone and they they were amazing for that person, doesn't mean that they're gonna work for you sit feel it feel if that's okay for you that's what i always say yeah and i agree with you and janice wrote in here it helps remind us when we get a reading it helps remind us that we are always connected yeah totally absolutely it's it is a gentle reminder but being really really cautious at the same time you have to be, you have to be discerning because i've got authentic i had mm -hmm. and you know who this is i had someone not like my behavior and come to me and say, oh, your mom's really upset with you because <laughs> I was like, oh, darn, I can understand. I can't no one knew where that came from. Right. And no one knew my mom better than I did. And so I had to laugh it off. I had to have the strength to laugh it off. Yeah. And I did because yeah. you, you know the person best. And so when you get a reading and, and if you do get a reading and somebody says something that's really off base, just yeah. just know that that's more about them and not you yeah. and i've had you know i've actually had to say to people i can't read for you anymore um yeah. you know and i i had a lady years ago her husband again sadly committed suicide and she was coming to me time and time again you know in the uk we have school holidays and those school holidays were every six weeks and every six weeks she was booking an appointment what would my husband do about the business what would my husband do what would my husband do what is my husband and I actually ended up having to say, because he told me, he said, I'm not doing this again. I shipped out for a reason. And this was his words. I shipped out for a reason. I don't want to be part of that. Bit. And that, that was one of the reasons why he left the business. And he loved her, but he, he couldn't keep, it was, it was like, I can't do it. You know? Yeah. And I had to say, listen, now is the time for you to heal because you know, you've got, let go of the business. If it's it, now you've got the opportunity to decide on what you want to do with the business. Cause it was her business. He was running it and he, it was just so much pressure, pressure, pressure. <laughs> it was hard. It was, well, it was her learning. And I had to do that too. After my mom passed, I had to learn how to stand on my own two feet and say, oh, okay, I guess I got to make decisions on my own now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so Joanne is, she's talking about her son. Does he, does he come through for you at all? Give me his name, Joanne. Let's let's get a connection because you Joanne, know I don't want to hear. Yeah, yeah I don't give me a little bit more information so we don't have to hunt and peck, and maybe he'll come through. Yeah, absolutely. And it's you know sometimes it's really hard because sometimes, and I will say this, and it happens a lot. People will say, "I've been to your shows five, ten, fifteen times, and I haven't had a reading. Why?" And I say, you know what? Sometimes they actually do not want to communicate with. Mm -hmm. um, in a big audience. They want to have a one-on-one -on -one with you. And I always say, that's when I say, go and have a reading with someone that you trust. Because, you know, it's, it, sometimes they don't want to share their dirty laundry in public. Exactly. <laughs> but it's not a finding. I mean, honestly, finding a really good spiritual meeting. Okay, so Joanne yeah. isn't saying anything more. Come on, let us know. Liz Williams, isn't that funny? Liz and Williams. Liz, I know. Liz Williams. She let StreamYard is better. I wonder what's different about StreamYard. We're yeah, using I don't StreamYard know. instead of going through. Okay, so I think she's saying his name was. I don't know. I haven't got it up. Ren. It's coming through. There's a delay when it comes through. Renee. Renee. No way. Renee. Okay. Perfect. Okay. All right. So let let's see. All right. Well, give us a minute. Let let's let give us a minute. Let me let me get that energy going in. Okay, I'm not sure if Renee passed very quickly. You're going to have to be quick on the uh, answers for me, Joanne, but because I'm not sure. But 
do you understand that he passed very quickly? There was a suddenness about his passing. Um, and what I just kept being shown is that I don't know whether you got never got a chance to say goodbye or there was a feeling of not getting a chance to say the goodbyes. Um, because what I keep seeing here is that this was a, I don't want to, I hate calling anything traumatic or tragic, um, but it just felt to me as though there was, um, there was just something that ripped, it was like ripping the whole world apart, like rip, and it would rip the family apart, but I just kept feeling as though everything was just ripped apart, okay? Um, and all I kept being shown here, and he's a funny guy, I gotta tell you, he's a funny, funny guy. And what I wanna say here is it's almost like this funny side, um, it's just, I just feel as though it's really, really funny, cheeky, mischievous, almost goofy as well because i just got i've just no goodbye okay because i got the feeling that he was very cheeky very mischievous the kind of fun one he wanted to be but also had this feeling of really um serious side i feel as though there was a part of him that not everyone saw so not everyone saw the other side of him he tried to keep himself or up and, and and goofy and fun okay and what he's laughing at and he's showing me the pictures on the wall. Um, and he, are you kidding me? Are you, okay, so I've just, now this is what I do. Cause I'm like, why didn't you come through early? And he said, well, she said that it didn't matter if she didn't get a reading and whoever would get it first. Oh. <laughs> so he's very literal. So this shows me that he's a really literal man with a very dry sense of humor. Um, a really dry sense of humor. So it was like, well, she that's what she said. So, you know, well. <laughs> so he's just got that side to him. Now he's actually telling you not to feel bad that you weren't there and not to feel guilty in not being able to help. Cause he's just said no one could help. There was a feeling that no one could actually help. Um, and he's he's got this beautiful smile on his face. Uh, it's lovely. He's just lovely looking, really lovely looking. Mm -hmm. But he shows me here that there are pictures, old pictures that are on the wall that I'm not so sure that he doesn't like or there's like you could put different pictures up. But he just kept showing me there are different pictures that could be put up. And he keeps talking about people have got different pictures on the wall. Um, but he's laughing. He's a great kid. Why Why are you here now? I'm like, why are you here? Because there always has to be a message. So because she told me to come. <laughs> so again, he's very literal. He's got this real goofy personality. And, and, and you'll have to confirm this for me, Joanne, if you can. But there is just this real goofy side to him, but very, very um, strong. But he wants you to know he's okay. And he's just given me this absolute heartfelt love absolute heartfelt love just uh just absolutely love 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 so just know that that's um that's important and just to give you a lot of love with that i know joanne's not joanne are you okay i'm a little bit concerned yeah. that this is hard because i'm not seeing you there and i'm seeing everybody else posting would you please let us know that you're you okay up or something yeah just let us know do you need yeah. Um, let's all let's all right now send some love to Joanne. Yeah, can we all just send some love to her right now, Joanne Louise? Just sending her some love, praying for her energy, letting her know that her son is with her. Everything that Lisa just shared. Um, let's just send her some healing and some love, guys. And Joanne, will you let us know that you're okay? I yeah, I don't think she can type right now. Is what I'm That's getting. Okay. okay. Got lots of hearts yes yeah. yes please send love to joanne louise everybody but your son is here much much love there she is oh he no that's tony that's no, joe he's a funny guy it was a funny guy almost very sarcastic yeah kind of goofy. He came through for you <laughs> yeah he's just really goofy so. yeah. <laughs> and i don't know why i just wanted to um i just wanted to say i don't know why i wanted to say Scrabble or something about Scrabble or dice. I don't know, but I'm trying to record and type and crying. Oh, bless don't worry you. about record. We're, this is going to be archived. Don't worry. Right. 
this will be through. I don't know whether I've got dice in my hands or whether I've got like I don't know. I got dice or I got something. Sorry, anyway, it's funny. But she's uh, but he's 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 adorable. He really is adorable. But he's a funny guy. Funny guy. So does this resonate? I think it's resonating for her because she's crying and typing and sending love. <laughs> she's also smiling. Yeah, he's he's a funny guy. I got to tell you, really, really funny. Oh, I just, oh, Lisa, you're just such an amazing, amazing blessing in this world. Thank I, you. Your work is so, so vital and important. And I know I've told you this 10,000 times, but you're, you're just an amazing woman and an amazing teacher. And I just love having you a part of my world. I'm so honored. Every time you say yes to an interview or yes to come to celebrate your life or yes, just to chat and do girl chat and yes! just shoot the shit. <laughs> I know, and not not many of you know this, but Liz saw my wedding dress before anybody else saw it. <laughs> yeah, and it, you know what? It's just it, Liz. I am really blessed with the the connection that you and I have made. I mean, it was years ago. I always say that doors close, opportunities come, and one massive door closed for me, and a bigger door opened, and that was when you walked in, and and I had the opportunity to work at Celebrate Your Life, and I was really honored and and i'm just so happy that i've been working with you guys for you know 10 years now and it's just been it's been amazing and i love it and i just feel like it's it's um it was meant to be and we're so going to continue to do fun things oh so yeah we're really safe now okay <laughs> <laughs> we can go do fun things together okay so here's the thing we're going to close out but i before don't go anywhere anybody because i'm going to text oh yeah text me Lisa, Lisa is going to announce the winner of the two tickets to the celebrate. Okay, hold on a second. I can't type and, and think at the same time. Okay, so she's going to announce the winner of the Celebrate Your Life two tickets to a live Celebrate Your Life event, not a retreat, but one of our events. Okay, so Lisa's going to it. announce it now. Ready? Are you all ready? All right. Okay. Yes. I have it. Ready? Right. Oh my gosh. It's like I'm I'm making you all wait. All right. So it is Jennifer Levy. So She's Jennifer, right. congratulations. Woo! Woo! <laughs> I don't know if you're on right now. She might be working, but we'll make sure that she's informed and so jennifer Levin, you have won two tickets to a future live celebrate your life a future live <laughs> celebrate your life fabulous oh, yeah. hey, lots of hearts i love it love it love it i'm watching all of this come up oh that's yes, fabulous I email her call her or something to let oh, her know that's fantastic but i wish it was me oh, oh bob oh bob. Diamond. oh you come to all of our events anyway so oh, <laughs> you that's so awesome that is that's so here. awesome <laughs> okay all right everybody thank all thank you so much for joining us this was a longer conversation than we thought um, but it was really fun. It was and fun. I appreciated you being here. Yeah. And everybody, we're going to be back here probably this weekend. I'll be checking in with all of you. And don't forget to finish your books. Don't forget to finish. We're all re we started a book club, and we're going to read your book through the book club too, by the way. Yes. Don't forget to finish reading Diana herself because Martha Beck's going to be in here, and we're going to be doing a whole Q&A and everything with Martha. Okay, everybody. Yay. Bye. Bye, everyone. I love you all so much.